Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, all week, well, all month actually, <laughs> we've been on the book of 1 Corinthians and we are beginning chapter 7 today and today is Friday. Praise God. Now, now why are we excited about Friday? Because, because you know, we don't do broadcasts on Saturdays and Sundays. So you take Saturday and Sunday to meditate on everything you've, you've been receiving from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Praise God. So make sure you do that and get the best of the Word of God. Now, if you have any question, don't hesitate to send and write. We get some of your questions. And, and if you notice, if you listen, somehow we get to answer your questions during the teaching. Praise God. Praise God. Now, but there are certain questions that we answer directly. You know, if you have a specific question and, and you need that direct answer, we still, and then still somehow um, use it to teach, you know, Praise God. Now then, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the spirit of utterance and grace. Your truth is being made available in every heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we receive our daily bread today. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 1. It says, now concerning the things whereof ye re you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So they had written some things a letter to Paul and asking him certain questions. Now, it, it's in the line of fornication and, and things like that. And you see why he was hammering on, on such in previous chapters. Even yesterday, we talked about such in chapter 6. Now he says, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. He says, it is good. Praise God. He said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Now, you can take this and, and release it, release your faith in this. You can say, Lord, Apostle Paul gave an instruction, and I have believed that. What is the instruction? Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own, have her own husband. And you're not married. You take his father. I hold on to this word. And I have my own wife. And I have my own husband. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because I don't want to get tempted with fornication. Praise God. So I, I pray for you. If you are seeking a life partner right now, I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you walk on the dust of the ground, dust will connect to dust. And that which belongs to you, your spouse, be connected to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, that's a good place to pray. Now, he says, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto her husband. Now, when he says due benevolence, what's he talking about? Now, listen, the, the husband is supposed to give the wife everything that she wants. So, what do you mean by that? Yes. Now, of course, everything means every right thing that she wants from, from sex to financial you know you know people have a, a whole lot of ideas these days and, and you wonder you know the husband say ah, my wife my wife cannot touch my money then she's not your wife if she needs it it's hers oh my wife doesn't touch my phone why Why? Ah, no, no, no. You know, you, you find even pastors who, who, who teach those kind of things and they say, eh, wives, don't be touching your husband's phone too. Now I'm not talking about when a wife is beginning to carry the husband's phone to check. Let me see who he is talking to. Now that itself is wrong. But you see, you must also understand the principle from the Garden of Eden where the Bible says, and they were both naked. The man and his wife and they were not ashamed now that's a principle in marriage if you are with someone maybe you're engaged to be married and, and you realize that 
you cannot be completely naked before that person. Now, what I, I don't mean taking off your clothes yet. <laughs> I'm talking about when he says naked, I'm talking about being plain. On, on as in every covering, remove every scale, every this is who I am. So if you if you if you're in a relationship and you're telling yourself that ah there is certain things I can never tell this man, or there is certain things I can never tell this woman, that's not your wife. I'm telling you the truth from the beginning. Just know it. If you have that restraint in your heart, then you have not found your wife. You have not found your husband. When you find your husband and wife, you will find out that it is so easy to be naked and not be ashamed. Notice the Bible said in Genesis, they were both naked, the man and his wife. See, not just the wife is naked. Ah, my wife tells me everything. Okay, you, you tell your wife everything. And no, you know, she's not everything she can handle. Yeah, you see, it's like that. Is it true that there are different kinds of understanding? Yes, there are. But it doesn't mean you hide things totally from me. You tell them, look, there is something about this thing I'm working on. But I'll tell you in due time, when I, when I get it figured out. And that's enough. Praise God. So, so I'm bringing all that to us. says, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Everything that is good. Uh, let me see what the verse 3. Uh, the husband, I'm reading from the Amplified classic now it says the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights goodwill kindness and what is due her as his wife and likewise the wife to her husband you don't hold anything back from your wife she's got rights over everything that is yours and you give it to her if someone is married i say i ah, don't trust women no you're married and you're saying don't trust women that, that includes your wife ah, i can never expose everything to my wife oh, ah, i don't trust women you you in the first place are confessing before the lord that you didn't marry your wife that's the truth that's what exactly what you are saying you are saying you did not marry your wife so you just married a girl a woman there and now you're treating her as a woman not as a wife I pray we, 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 we go back to truth and leave where truth abides. Verse 4, the wife had no power of her own body. The wife had no power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband had no power of his own body, but the wife. Did you see that? <laughs> as, a, as, a, as, a, as a husband or as a wife, he said, you don't have power over your body. Someone has power over your body. And who's that person? Your husband. <laughs> you know, I was, I was talking to you know, someone some time ago. They, they, they want to get married. They're planning to get married. And they came to me. And I said, I want you to know this truth. The moment you get married, you lose every right to ask God for anything without your husband's consent consent and say what say, yes but am i not god's daughter you are but you see god will never give you anything without your husband's consent consent your husband must consent to it and that's why he he tells us we're going to see it here that, that, that's the difficulty in marrying a non-believer, a, a, a woman marrying a non-believer, especially where the wife is concerned. And the reason is because the man is the head. doesn't matter what anybody thinks. God has made it so. Now, head doesn't mean my job is to tell you, sit down here, don't go out, stay here. That's not what it means to be the head. God is our head. It does, that's not what he does to us. Now, before you tell your wife, sit down here, then you, you must be ready to provide everything she needs that in her sitting down, she's going to be sitting down with joy. See, you understand what I'm talking about? Praise God. So, so he says here, he says the wife had no power over her body, but her husband. The same thing with the husband and the wife. The, 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 the husband too does not have, so don't say I'm the, I'm the husband, so you are my wife. Anytime I want something, you must give it to me. 
the wife too has that same right. I'm not making this up. It's here. If the wife says, I want something from your body, you have to give it to her for his God. Now he says, defraud now, verse, verse 5 says, defraud ye not one the other, except that it be consent for a time that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. What's he saying? He is talking about sexual relationship here between a husband and a wife. He said, don't defraud one another. What does it mean? Why did he use the word defraud? Why did he use the word defraud? I'll tell you why. Your body belongs to your wife if you're the man. Or if you're the woman, your body belongs to your husband, right? Now, when it comes to sex, either of you will want it whenever you want it. And he said, when whoever wants it, don't defraud. He used the word defraud. So don't say, I am not ready or I'm not in the mood. <laughs> now, when you begin to do that, you are defrauding. That's what he is. Because the thing you're saying, I cannot give, is not even your own. So when you say, I cannot give, now you are defrauding. See, what does it mean to defraud? What is meant for another, you steal it to yourself. You appropriate it to yourself. That is defrauding. So that's why he used the word defraud. He said, don't do it, except it is with consent. So except you guys said, okay, you know what? For the next one week, you know, we're going to give ourselves. And the, only, the reason, the only reason he gave is what? Fasting and prayer. <laughs> now, there's a lot I, I can tell you. We can go so deep on this. <laughs> Praise God. He said, okay, what, a, what if, what if there's, there's a health issue? What if someone is not feeling well? Of course. Now, that's why both of you are husband and wife. You understand one another. It does, he's not saying here that every day husband and wife must be having sex every day. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying you must have an understanding and always come to agreement when it is not right for it to happen. When it's not right for you to have it. You understand? What I'm there must be an agreement. Okay, this is the reason we, we can do it now. Okay, I understand. It is fine. But don't say, ah, no, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow. Or, you know, sometimes a, a, a wife will say, eh, that money I actually didn't give me, so forget about it. That's wrong. You have no right to say that. You don't have no right to do that. Praise God. Now I'm talking to married people here, not, not boyfriend and girlfriend. Praise God. So he says, all right. He says, if, if you defraud one another, you're causing trouble to yourselves. You're causing trouble. Why? Because of your incontinency. See, because of that gap you give yourselves, Satan can take advantage. He said, but I speak this by permission and not by, not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man had his proper gift of God. One after this manner and another after that manner. I said therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I am. Now, for some reason, Paul wasn't married. Now, it's not clear if he was um, widowed or he just never um, got to marry. And, and he, he said, look, I, I, want to, I, I wish you can be like I am. But he says, I'm not saying this by commandment. It's just you know, me expressing my thoughts. Because he's saying, now, now, the truth is, something is not altogether right with what he said. I'll tell you why. The wisdom of God from the beginning said this. It is not good that a man should be alone. No, Adam didn't pray for a wife. He wasn't fasting and praying and God said, okay, I'll give you. God looked at man, the wisdom of God, the, the, old, the, the, the wisest of every being. He looked at man, looked at him from head to toe, looked at him from every angle. And then he made this confession. It is not good that a man 
I should be alone. So Paul's wish here is faulted by the wisdom of God. When God says something is not good, believe me, it is not good. Praise God. I pray even as we end this broadcast this week, Lord. I pray you fulfill your desire concerning marriage to everyone watching me right now. Lord, it is your wisdom that says it's not good that we be alone. Therefore, as I prayed earlier, I say it again. Everyone is having his own spouse. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Have the best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.